Hello everyone, this is Dr. Spruans and for today, magsasagot naman tayo ng mga parallelograms gamit yung midline theorem or mid-segment theorem. Ngayon naman ay magsasagot tayo ng mga problems involving yung ating mga special cases ng quadrilaterals, specifically yung trapezoid at saka yung ating kite. Gagamitin din natin yung ating midline theorem or mid-segment theorem sa pagsagot ng ilan sa mga parts na hanapin natin sa mga polygons natin today. At yan yung pag-uusapan natin sa geometry problems na sasagutan natin para mas magkaroon tayo ng confidence when it comes to working with uh, polygons dito sa ating mga parallelograms na hinahanapan ng sukat. So sa ating first Quadrilateral, yung ating quadrilateral ay kakaiba yung uh, representation dahil dito yung ating mga points ay given sa ating xy plane. So meron tayong points V, S, T, and U at yung ang kanyang mga coordinates doon sa ating xy plane. At in this trapezoid, which is represented by STUV, kailangan daw nating hanapin yung line segment YZ at alam natin na yung line segment YZ represents the midline or the mid-segment ng ating trapezoid. So, umpisahan natin sa formula na gagamitin natin since hahanapin natin yung midline, gagamitin natin yung ating formula for the mid-segment which is half of base 1 plus base 2. But the only problem is, kailangan muna natin hanapin yung mga me measurements ng mga bases natin to be able to use this formula. So in this visual representation ng ating mga points na nag-form ng trapezoid, hahanapin natin yung length ng line segment SV. Gagamit tayo dito ng distance formula dahil wala tayong expression at wala rin tayong actual length na clue para hanapin yung ating sukat ng line segment SV. So how are we going to find the length using the distance formula? Sana ay na tatandaan nyo pa yung distance formula natin sa geometry at kung hindi nyo pa or hindi nyo na natatandaan, ang distance formula natin ay given by the square root of the difference of x squared plus the difference of y squared. So yan yung gagamitin natin to find Line segment SV, so si line segment SV, gagamitin natin ang distance formula which is the difference of the axis squared plus the difference of the measurement or the coordinate of y squared. So medyo maraming variables pero ang technique na ginagawa ko dito is alam ko na yung ating coordinate for S I 0, 6, at yung V, I 2, 2. So alam ko na ito yung aking x-coordinate at ito yung aking y-coordinate. So ang aking SV would be 0 minus 2 squared plus 6 minus 2 squared. Para mabilis ko makukuha na ang nahanap natin para sa distance or sukat ni SV ay negative 2 squared plus 4 squared. At ang value ng negative 2 squared natin is 4. At ang 4 squared natin ay 16. Kaya, ang ating distance ay 4 plus 16 which is equal to 20. So, ito ngayon yung ating length ng ating line segment SV na pwede pa natin simplify by factoring 20 with its perfect square dahil si 20, alam natin na siya ay 4 and 5 at ang square root of 4 ay equal to 2 at ang square root of 5 ay just square root of 5 so ito yung simpler form ng ating square root of 20 without using the calculator so ngayon, alam na natin sukat ni SV gamit yung ating distance formula and by simplifying our expression and uh, Factoring our square root of 20, the simplest form of our measurement is going to be 2 square root of 5. At ang kailangan na lang natin gawin is kunin naman ang measurement ng ating other base. At yung other base natin ay line segment TU. 
at ang T ay represented by 0.810 at 0.12 naman ang representation ni point V. So, let's use the same technique na ginamit natin kanina. CT, ang ating coordinate ay 8 and 10. At CU, hindi pala V, kundi U. CU naman ay 12 and 2. Ito yung X, ito yung Y. Distance formula would be the difference of X. So, 8 minus 12 and then square it. Plus the difference of y, so 10 minus 2 squared. And just doing the math, 8 minus 12 is 4 squared. 10 minus 2 is going to be 8 squared. And by simplifying this, we have 16 and 64. At kukulin natin yung sum nyan at makukuha na natin yung value ng ating t. U. At ang 16 plus 64, pag in natin yan, will equal to 80. At yung ating square of 80, which is represented by line segment TU, ay pwede pa nating simplify by thinking of the factors of 80 na magbibigay sa atin ng perfect square. At ang factors na hinahanap natin dyan would be Alam niyo ba ang factors ng 80 na may perfect square? Iyan ay 16 times 5. At alam natin ang square root of 16 ay equal to 4. And 5 ay nasa loob dahil wala naman square root of 5 na perfect. Or uh, integers. So ito ngayon yung value ng TU na hinahanap natin. So, alam na natin si SV. Alam na rin natin ang simplest form ni TU, which is 4 squared of 5. So, ang gagawin na lang natin is hanapin yung line segment YZ, which is our midline or mid-segment. Kaya, linisin na natin yung ating uh, slide at gamitin yung formula ng ating midline para makuha natin yung sukat ni ZY. So, ang formula ni ZY, kailangan natin ng two bases. Si base 1 natin ay si SV. At si base 2 natin ay si TU. So, gamitin natin yung formula to solve for this length or measurement. So, si YZ is equal to 1 half of base 1 plus base 2 na nagkataon naman na ang base 1 natin ay 2 squared of 5 plus base 2 na 4 squared of 5. At maganda na meron tayong radical na may parehas na index dahil pwede natin niyang i-combine similar to combining like terms. And 2 plus 4 is 6. So meron tayong 1 half, 6 square root of 5. So ang gagawin na lang natin is to get rid of this annoying one half and to be able to do that all we need to do is to represent this in fraction form like so dahil alam natin na si 6 ang factored form ni 6 ay 3 times 2 so pwede natin i-cancel si 2 at ang sagot natin ay 3 square root of 5 at ito ngayon yung length ng ating midline YZ na hinahanap natin mula sa mga given points ng ating STUV trapezoid. So by doing so, we're able to figure out a way on how to use our midline theorem to be able to solve the length of our median. So a median natin, which is represented by YZ, is 3 squared of 5, given yung information na meron tayo sa trapezoid natin. So ang susunod naman natin problem ay isang kite. At yung kite na yan, Meron tayong mga angles na given, G, H, J, K. And for this problem, ang hahanapin na lang natin is yung measurement ni G at ni measurement ni J. Ang given information, meron tayong measurement ni H at ni measurement ni K. At ang gagawin lang natin to be able to answer this problem is bumalik doon sa basic 
theorem about polygons natin na alam natin na ang sum ng interior angles ng ating quadrilaterals or polygons with four corners ay equal to 360. So pag in natin yung mga angles natin na naporma sa kahit na yan, it will equal to 360 degrees. So with this in mind, we know that if we use that theorem, and also, yung kite theorem natin about congruency ng opposite angles, ang hahanapin na lang natin dito ay yung isang measurement ni angle G, kasi pag nahanap natin yung measurement ni G or ni J, mahanap na rin natin yung measurement ng opposite angle niya. So first, let's find that missing angle. And to do that, we're going to be naming J with X at si G ay parehas ding X dahil magkaparehas ang value niya dahil siya ay congruent according to our kite theorem. So set up na natin yung ating quadrilateral theorem which is the measurement of angle G, H, J, K will equal to 360 degrees. At alam naman natin ang measurement ni H which is 32 degrees, 132 degrees, at yung measurement ni angle K, which is 60 degrees, at ang i-add pa natin, syempre, yung ating mga X's, which happens to be the measurement of angle G and J. And now, meron na tayong algebraic equation na pwedeng gamitin para masolve natin yung value ng X. So meron tayong X plus 132 plus x plus 60 equals 360. Sinabi ko ba kanina 360 or 180? So 360 pag quadrilateral, 180 kapag ka triangle. So 360, so x and x is going to be 2x, and then i-add natin si 132 plus 60, which happens to be 192 equals 360. At ang gagawin na lang natin is subtract 192 on both sides. So that makuha na natin yung value ng x at alam natin na kapag ka natin yung 192 or sinubtract natin si 192 sa 360, it will equal to 168. Kaya pwede na natin i-divide yung ating equation by 2 so that x will be by itself. And we know that 168 divided by 2 is equal to 84 degrees. At yan ngayon, yung value ni x na hinahanap natin para makomplete natin yung missing angles ng kite na ito. So by using our value, which is 84, all we need to do is to replace the value of j, which is 84, kasi yan yung x value or yung ating angle. And we know that it's congruent to angle j, so, pares lang ng measurement si G at si J. So, alam na natin ngayon yung four measurements ng angles na hinahanap natin sa kite na ito using yung theorem ng kite and yung ating in, sum ng interior angles ng quadrilateral which is equal to 360 degrees. So, let's have the second kite of the day. In this time, hahanapin naman natin yung measurement ni angle B at ni measurement ni angle D given yung information natin sa kite na yan. So, mapapansin nyo na si angle C ay explicitly given which is 46 degrees pero sa measurement of angle A, wala siyang value but we know that that symbol is telling us that the measurement of angle A is equal to 90 degrees. So ang hahanapin na lang natin is yung angle B and D which happens to be opposite angles ng ating kite. So ibig sabihin yan, using the theorem, yung ating angles are congruent. So umpisahan muna natin form yung ating equation, which is the measurement of A plus the measurement of B plus the measurement of C plus the measurement of angle D is equal to 360 degrees. And by replacing measurement of A with 90, measurement of C with 46, at yung measurement natin ng B and D, which is missing, is going to be X dahil parehas naman ang value ni D and B. So isang variable lang ang gagamitin natin, which is the X Variable. So we have x and x for d and b 
At tulad ng ginawa natin sa previous example, i-add lang natin si x, i-add natin si 90 and 46, and then use algebra to solve for x. So now we have 2x plus 136 is equal to 360 degrees. Subtracting 136 on both sides will give us 2x is equal to 224. And by dividing both sides by 2, ang ating angle na hinahanap ay equal to 112 degrees, which is the measurement of angle D and at the same time, the same measurement of angle B, dahil nga sabi, congruent ang mga opposite angles ng ating kite of this form. So now, meron na tayong measurement ni A, measurement ni B, measurement ni C, at ni measurement ni D using yung ating theorems ng kite and using our basic understanding about the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral or a four-angled polygon, which is 360 degrees. At yan ang uh, ilan sa mga techniques and paraan sa paggamit ng midline theorem at ng theorem ng mga kites sa pagsagot ng parallelogram or ng quadrilateral tulad ng mga examples natin today. At para sa inyong number bender challenge for today, meron tayong trapezoid at hahanapin nyo naman yung value ng x and y para makuha nyo yung mga measurements ng lengths ng ating trapezoid na yan. So sa mga kakasa sa ating number bender challenge of the day, comment it down below and let's see kung ano ba ang measurements ng mga lengths at saka yung median ng trapezoid na meron tayo sa problem na ito. So sa pagsagot ng ating mga geometry problems involving uh, special types of quadrilateral at paggamit ng ating midline theorem, kinakailangan lang natin na na-visualize natin ng tama yung mga given information na hatid sa atin ng ating mga geometry problems and it would also help if we are going to draw and illustrate those polygons para mas na-visualize natin yung paggamit ng mga formula na makakatulong sa atin sa pag-solve ng geometry problems similar to this one. This is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye!